Hello. Thanks, everybody, for joining Aspire this year. We're pretty excited about the content, and uh, we're excited you've, you've joined us for this session. It's one of two sessions we're doing on NetSuite. This session is primarily targeted at uh, clients, companies that are already using NetSuite. Uh, but if you have joined us and you're not using NetSuite, but you're curious about NetSuite, this is a good session because we will talk about some of the newer features in NetSuite. I will mention the other session is on NetSuite more core functionality. So be sure to check out both of the sessions, but thanks for being here. My name is Jeff Andrews. I'll introduce myself and I'm excited to have Melissa with me. She'll introduce herself in just a minute. Um, I am based in Cincinnati, been with the company for quite a while and I lead our NetSuite business. So it's great to be with everybody and we're glad you're here. Melissa, you wanna say hello? Yeah, sounds good. Thank you, Jeff, for that intro. So thank you. Uh, Hey everybody, thank you for joining our session for Elevated Potential in NetSuite. Welcome to Aspire 23. My name is Melissa Lugo. Um, I am based out of Florida, uh, have been consulting with NetSuite for over four years, uh, so very comfortable with the product and be, you know, very excited to be joining this session, getting you more involved with NetSuite and getting to know NetSuite a little bit better. All right. Very good. Well, thanks again. We've got a couple of slides here at the beginning. I want to kind of set up what is this session all about? Um, as you may know, NetSuite has quite a bit of functionality, native functionality. Uh, in fact, everything you see on this screen here, and there's quite a bit here, is native functionality from NetSuite in the product. And um, many companies don't need all this functionality, but there's so much functionality. It's such a deep and broad product that we wanted to highlight some of the newer features in NetSuite. But by all means, if there's something we don't cover today in this session that you see on this slide, feel free to ask us. We'd be happy to tell you more about any of the functionality. Um, now on this next slide, you'll see these are more platform features. We are gonna talk about a few of these. In fact, we're gonna talk about three specifically, a little bit on reporting and saved searches. We're gonna talk about Suite Analytics and we're gonna talk about Suite Flow and some of the advanced capabilities in those platform tool sets. And then one thing we always encourage clients is when you start with NetSuite, because it has so much functionality, you don't have to use it all day one. You know, start with a set and you can grow into the features as you can you know, optimize and deploy more and more of the functionality over the first few months and years that you're using NetSuite. So let's dive in. Here's a look at our agenda. I'll give you a quick overview of this agenda, and then I'm going to turn it over to Melissa to share many of the first power tools. But power tools and features, these are a handful of things that you probably know about. You probably know about safe searches if you've used NetSuite for very long because it's a great tool. A lot of advanced features, though, that many clients we work with aren't aware of. Then we're going to talk about Suite Flow, which is the visual workflow builder. We're going to touch on a little bit on NetSuite APIs and then wrap up this section with Suite Analytics Workbook. It's a newer feature in the platform. Then we're gonna round out the back half of the session with some newer features in the product this year, uh, NetSuite AP Automation, Suite People Workforce Management, CPQ, and then at the very end, we're gonna tease you with a couple of new things and then something we hope you'll participate in with us in a few months. So Melissa, I will turn it over to you to start off with Save Searches. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeff. So as Jeff was saying, safe searches has been around forever. Very integral part of NetSuite, very important tool in NetSuite. However, sometimes it does get overlooked, right? Overall, what is it? What is a safe search? Essentially, it's a querying tool. It's a powerful search tool that you can use. It has an easy to use interface, no need to do any SQL, any coding, none of that. It's very easy to use. You can filter essentially anything that's within NetSuite, right? Our motto tends to be, if it's in NetSuite, it's probably searchable. So you have that option of searching for information, filtering that information based on different parameters, keywords, names, dates, right? Once you've had those informations, once you have that data filtered out, then you can also integrate it in your dashboards, put it as a list view, put it as a sub-list view on a related record, right? And also control who has access to that information, right? So you have the capability of essentially limiting it to specific users, specific roles, ultimately determining who really can view that information and controlling you know, the privacy of that information and what it ultimately entails. 
couple of advanced features on it is not just a powerful querying tool, you also have the ability to create formulas, create functions to really help more complex data filtering to make sure you're getting the best out of the information. You can also group, fun you can use group functions, um, you can summarize that data and ultimately create very, very useful reports and in integrate them into your KPIs as well, right? So a little bit just an overview of what that safe search looks like. There are, you know, two main pieces to this. First off is what information are you looking to essentially filter out? Well, in this example, we're looking at a transaction search, right? And we want to filter out the transaction where we're only looking at cash sales, credit memos, cash refunds. We want to make sure we are filtering that out based on a specific date. So we only want to see data that's created after a certain date. So that's how do we filter the information to make sure we're only showing a specific subset, right? After we filter that out, then we can go in and use those advanced features that I was talking about. So you put in a couple of formulas. So for example, if we're looking at case statements where we are filtering the data based on specific locations that were used in those transactions, um, you know, specific quantities, et cetera, then we can go in, group those, and ultimately create a report where, you know, this would be the result where I'm looking at all of my locations where I'm holding inventory, and I can also see what, what have been the sales, those um, very important sale numbers that we want to make sure we're reporting on and we have visibility over, how do we make sure we track that and we use that information. And we're using this very powerful querying tool to gather that information and use it for reporting purposes to track our inventory, to track what items you know, sell better. And we have that capability with a tool that can be maximized or should be maximized. And that's why we are definitely wanting to highlight it during this, uh, during this session. So another important tool that sometimes does get overlooked is Sweetflow. Essentially, it's workflows, right? A tool that we can use to create, execute, and ultimately automate much of the business processes that are very common in business functions, right? They're a part of our day-to-day -day bread and butter. It's a user-friendly point-and-click interface as well. No, use to, no need to do scripting. Are, are complicated functions that ultimately kind of take the feature out of it being user-friendly. So let's go through an example, right? A little bit of the benefits of those workflows. Well, process consistency, the typical use that you see for workflows is approval process, right? How do we make sure transactions are running through a specific steps, uh, running through all of the people that need to keep eyes on a transaction, that need to make sure everything is good to go, uh, making sure we're improving those processes, putting those transactions in front of everybody. So that's definitely one of the use cases. There are, you know, there's a breadth of all, all the use cases for suite approval. So quick example, you go in, you customize, you create a workflow. This specific workflow that we're going to look at is an approval process. As you can see, user-friendly point-and-click interface, very interactive. You set your your conditions, you set your values, and ultimately you determine how you want that sales order to flow through the different people that need to be keeping eyes on it, right? Put in those different types of actions. Here we are defining what the workflow needs to do. Same thing, we're not using scripting, we're not using anything very overly complex, using point and click and user interface. We're also deciding how we want that transaction to move over, same, same situation, right? And ultimately we can determine, well, do we want this workflow to run every time we create a transaction or do we want it to be a little bit more scheduled? Do you have that flexibility as well? Um, very, very powerful tool. And I'm gonna turn it over to Jeff for your sweet analytics workbook. Very good, thanks, Melissa. Yep. Most of you know that NetSuite has over 300 standard reports, KPIs and dashboards. A lot of times our companies that we work with and, and talk, about NetSuite with and deploy NetSuite for, they're always asking the question early on, like, well, what reporting tool do I need to buy and add on from another party to do my reporting? And of course our answer is you don't. NetSuite has so much native in the platform. And so if, if of the 300 standard reports, KPIs and dashboards, if they don't give you exactly what you need, you have safe searches like Melissa just shared. And then you also have, um, you have the ability to, leverage a few other tools, so customizing standard reports, 
or what's called Suite Analytics Workbooks. So I'm gonna share a little bit about that. And I do have a couple of slides that I wanna share. All right, so first, what is Suite Analytics Workbook? Suite Analytics is a tool that was rolled out a couple of years ago. Think of it as a built-in business intelligence tool. It's gonna to give you powerful uh, reporting and, and capabilities to explore your data, kind of look at your data through a drag and drop, easy to use tool. And another way to look at it is think about all those things you might do in spreadsheets today. You export your data out of your system, you do a bunch of manipulation, you know, you're the only one with access to it, and then you got to email it around, and then it's stale the minute, you know, you've exported it. This is a tool built right in. And so let me give you a, a, a little bit of background on Suite Analytics workbooks. Uh, here's kind of an overview. Uh, query and Net, all your NetSuite data is available. One of the great features is you don't have to do data work to get to building these workbooks. All the table joins are done for you. If you've ever used a BI tool, you know, a lot of times 75% 70, 70, of the work is importing your data, mapping it, doing table joins. That's all done for you. And then you can simply here just build your criteria, leverage formula builders, um, and build your workbook. So I'm going to show you that in just a minute. The workbooks give you the ability to slice and dice your data, look at table views, pivot things, chart things, save it, share it, export it. The nice thing is it's in NetSuite. So the next time you come into NetSuite or somebody you've shared it with comes into NetSuite and looks at that workbook, it's all real-time data. So let's take a look at a demo. All right, so I am, I am logged in here to NetSuite. And if you've been in NetSuite, you certainly are familiar with this interface. Right at the top here, I have my Suite Analytics um, view, and I've got that open in another window. So I'm going to pop over there. And the first thing you want to do when using Suite Analytics is you want to either use an existing data set or build a new data set. So I'm going to show you a new data set. If we wanted to build a data set for anything that we want to start to drill in and analyze, all of my data sets are right here. So I don't have to really do anything but go and what am I looking for? Maybe I'm looking for some customer data. So I select my customer data set and Suite Analytics immediately brings me back to all the common data related to a customer that's in this second column right here. So I can do things very easily by just either dragging and dropping or double clicking and putting that data right where I want it. And once I get all my data, um, you know, I'm ready to go. Now, one neat thing is all this data here is my standard customer data, but all of my related data throughout the NetSuite platform is over here on the left. So if I'm looking for some other kind of data related to the customer, transactions, sales, you name it, I can go right in and select that related data as well. So that's how easy it is to build a data set. Now, once you've got your data set, then you can create a workbook. Think of it like an Excel spreadsheet. So I have an AR aging data, uh, workbook already built. So you can see what that looks like. And what you'll notice is as this AR aging loads, all of my data in my data set related to this AR aging is loaded. And I'm going to see it in just a standard table view first. Like Excel, I've got my columns, date, the type, subsidiary entity, you know, et cetera. And all the data set data is over on the left. And in, in this case, all of my data from the data set is in my table. And I can drag and drop, I can filter, I can do conditional formatting, I can sort different ways. But really the power then comes in once you've got your core table I can create a pivot or a chart. And I've got a few of those already made. Here is a chart from that data workbook of top five customers by amount due. And we can see who those are. And what's great is now that I've got this workbook built, I can share it, I can export it if I do need to export it. But every time I wanna look at that data set or any of these charts or pivots, it's all in real time. And even best, if I go back to my dashboard, 
Dashboards are very powerful because I can very easily personalize my dashboard in any table, chart, pivot, list that I created in the Suite Analytics, I can select and put right on my dashboard so that I'll select the one we just looked at so that every time now I log in, my dashboard is gonna show me that analytics data right here with all of my other data that's in real time on the dashboard in that suite. So that's a great um, tool that if you're not leveraging, I would encourage you to dig in and build a data set and build a few workbooks so that you can take advantage of suite analytics. All right, we're gonna flip back over to our PowerPoint and we're gonna dive into a couple of other uh, features now, but these are going to be more things that are relevant um, or related to new features in NetSuite as of 2023.1. You may know that new releases are dated or numbered 23.1 and 23.2. So you'll see here a number of things in 2023.1 that was released or that was enhanced greatly we're gonna to touch on the first few. So NetSuite AP Automation, NetSuite CPQ, Suite People Workforce Management. We're gonna to touch on Analytics Warehouse a bit, and then just know there are some advanced revenue recognition enhancements. NetSuite Ship Central, which is kind of a combination of a lot of shipping automation and capabilities. And then the Cache 360 dashboard has gotten a lot of enhancements as well. If you're interested in any details on all of these, especially the last three that we won't get into today just due to time, feel free to reach out to us and we can share more about these. So, Melissa, I'm going to turn it uh, back over to you. I'll drive our slides here, but I'll take us to AP Automation and let you tell us a bit about NetSuite's newest AP Automation capabilities. Sounds good. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so, let's talk a little bit about AP Automation. So, overall, NetSuite's an ERP. We do have everything that has to do with processing purchase orders, receiving those, processing vendor bills, and doing payments. Now, what is AP Automation? Essentially, it enhances all of those capabilities, adds features, adds functionalities to make sure your process is more streamlined, is more accurate, it reduces data entry, and it makes sure is essentially that the process is as wonderful and uh, great as it can be, essentially, right? We're looking for a way to automate the creation of bills, simplify the payment of vendor bills, keeping track of all of those very big challenges that we face as part of uh, a processing or a procurement process, right? So what are those common payment processing challenges overall? So sometimes it is difficult to make sure you're capturing all of your vendor bill information as it is, right? whether that is you received a vendor bill through email, you received a PDF, um, maybe you received a paper invoice. All of these things sometimes can make really tracking all of your vendor bills and all of your procurement process very difficult. What is also a common issue that you have as part of a procurement process? Well, sometimes we definitely need to make sure that the bill that we received is for a service that we that was provided to us or an inventory item that we did purchase that we did receive. We wanna make sure we have a matching process between all of those purchase orders between ultimately what was actually billed to us. So that does help uh, AP Automation does facilitate that matching process. As I was alluding to uh, previously during the workflow presentation, there is a, also an approval process that needs to take place when we are working with vendor bills, make sure everyone who needs to have eyes on those vendor bills has the correct you know, approval levels, uh, the approval process and making sure things are as accurate as correct and ultimately real as possible. And what is another challenge? How do we pay those vendor bills? How do we make sure we're reconciling the vendor bills? Ultimately making sure all of those payments went through, the vendors received the correct amount of payment, making sure we are matching all of the payments that we made, all those cash outs with the correct vendor bills. So we wanna make sure we're improving that process as well. And overall visibility and control is the goal, right? We wanna make sure we are keeping, um, we're keeping visibility over all of the process and all of the people involved in that process. So Net NetSuite AP Automation, make sure we are hitting on all of those issues and all of those great challenges that 
a lot of companies have, right? So how do we easily make sure we're capturing vendor invoices? Well, one of the new features for AP automation that came out this year, this new release is making sure we use um, easy ways to capture vendor bill information. So NetSuite actually has, uh, a new, sorry, the new feature is we now have the capability to receive vendor bills through email and use OCR technology to capture all of the relevant information from that vendor bill and create your vendor bill in NetSuite, right? So essentially you are reducing data entry. All you need to do is receive that email, receive the vendor bill. NetSuite is gonna go ahead, match that bill created within NetSuite to the relevant PO. And then that PO can go through, I'm sorry, that vendor bill can go through the correct approval process within NetSuite, right? So we're easily capturing vendor invoices, reducing data entry, and making sure that bill is going through the correct approval process. What it also helps with is making sure we are matching that vendor bill with the correct PO. We're making sure that um, the approval process is correct and easily uh, adjust to the current process that you have within your company. Also, we are working with payment automation. So now HSBC um, online account automates bill payments. We do also have the capability of creating ACH payment files um, and ultimately using credit cards as payment methods for all of those vendor bills, right? And overall, coming back to the objective of all of this is making sure we have greater visibility and control over the procurement process as a, as a whole, right? So NetSuite does provide vendor not vendor, uh, provides user dashboards that provide real-time visibility to bank accounts, all of those ACH payments going out, credit card payments going out, and ultimately being able to monitor all of your vendor bills that are being received via the OCR, being created, what status are they in the approval process, and just greater overall control over what is going on in your procurement process, right? So this is a little bit of an example of what that invoice capture process looks like. Um, you do have the option of also dragging and dropping vendor bills into NetSuite, and you have the option of, of receiving uh, vendor bills that have been emailed right to a specific email address that has been related to the overall NetSuite instance. As I mentioned, NetSuite uses OCR technology, which is optical character recognition technology, to capture important information within that vendor bill. It's going to capture your vendor name, your PO name. Um, the specific item information, it's gonna make sure it's looking at quantities and rates and making that uh, vendor bill within NetSuite easily usable to making sure you are matching to the correct PO it's currently associated with, right? So it's gonna build automatically link that bill record to the related purchase order. Now, once that invoice has been created within NetSuite, then the approval process is gonna take place, right? We have an automated three-way matching of that invoice, the PO and the receiving documents. It helps avoid um, ultimately overpaying. It helps avoid duplicate payments or a vendor bill that is fraudulent, right? We didn't receive those items. We didn't receive that service. So we wanna make sure <clears throat> we are keeping track of all of these, right? And ultimately suite approvals, which is a little bit different than suite flow, can be used to uh, enable uh, vendor bill approvals via emails, which is another cool functionality that NetSuite does um, provide. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about payment automation. Once you have that vendor bill that has been approved, how do we make sure that payment is going through correctly? Well, there are a lot of different ways to pay off those vendor bills. Within NetSuite, we have the ability to create ACH files. We have the ability to print and ch uh, print check stubs. We have the, the ability to use uh, virtual credit cards. So we have all of those options available, which can be easily tailored uh, depending on ultimately what your process is going to look like and the business needs overall. Okay, and last step of the process, how do make, we make sure our bank statements reconcile to all of those cash outs, right? NetSuite does have the uh, feature that is essentially the um, bank connector where you can receive all of the information, daily information, live information from your bank account. You're receiving all of everything that shows up in your bank statements 
and that can be easily reconciled to the transactions that have been created and have gone out of NetSuite. So making sure we're tracking all of that cash flow um, and ultimately correct reporting over everything, keeping track of everything, going over back to the main goal of the AP automation, which is clear control um, and efficient processing of all of your vendor bills. Very good. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Melissa. Oh, this last slide, I guess, on Sweet Banking Center, I guess you yeah. touched on that a little bit. Any other ads on this slide here? No, this is essentially okay. anything and everything that you do um, as part of the process. You can have dashboards per users, per roles, where you can provide uh, instant clarity and uh, control over the information that is going through the process. So you don't have to look deep into what is going on within the system, put those portlets in your dashboard and making sure you have useful information um, right at that point where you're logging in. Yeah, great, thanks. I mean, AP Automation is such a great efficiency. If you've got a high volume of vendor bills or, um, or there's a lot of inaccuracies, we run into clients where there's just a lot of hand keying and this can really, really save a lot of time and, and lower your error rate on paying vendors and just making that much more efficient. As you may know too, there are third parties that have AP automation and we do have partnerships with many of those. So sometimes NetSuite's a better fit. Sometimes the third party's a better fit. We know kind of with the pros and cons of all those different options. So feel free to ask us if NetSuite's newest AP automation is a fit for you or maybe another third party is. All right, so moving on into the next section, as you may know, many years ago, NetSuite released Sweet People, and it has both HR and payroll capabilities. Those are optional. You don't have to do both. HR, for instance, has a lot of features for managing people, jobs, um, onboarding, offboarding, PTO, benefits, all those things that you would traditionally see in an HR solution or HCM solution. One of the newest additions to the Sweet People family is what NetSuite calls workforce management. And it brings a lot of capability around scheduling, forecasting of scheduling or people needs, shifts, uh, shift swap, swapping and things like that. So let me give you just a quick overview of that capability. The first one is around workforce scheduling. So think about it, if you've got a business especially that might have a lot of um, hourly labor or shifts, this tool is gonna give you the ability to forecast the need for people based on past history or based on um, business needs. And then you can have your people clock in and out in real time, right from their iPhone or Android. You can monitor that data. They can request time off from their mobile device, but really some of the neat things come into play as uh, schedule change automation um, or shift scheduling or swapping, sorry, shift swapping. Um, you know, the last thing you want to do is have a big labor force where you get your team scheduled for who needs to be where and when. And then when they want to change or they can't make a shift, they've got to come to you and now you've got to facilitate that work. So one of the great things in this workforce management capability is the ability for you to kind of then let the team take that and swap between themselves. You know, if they can find a person to swap with, great. If they can't, well, we hope that they better show up. So that is what's facilitated here in the new workforce management capability. So ask us more about that if you'd like to learn more. We wanna to touch on for a minute CPQ. CPQ stands for configure price quote. You've probably been a user of a CPQ system before. If you've bought a laptop or you maybe you bought a car online before, that is a good use of CPQ. You go in, you say, I wanna buy this. It comes with options. The system knows how to guide you through that selling process or buying process. And so that's exactly what NetSuite's new CPQ tool does. There are some advanced features for guided selling for your internal sales team. There's a capability for you to push that out to your website so that a buyer can, uh, you know, a customer of yours can do that directly on your website. And the tool can even do some automation around proposal generation. And you can see here, here's an example of buying a car and some of the options that come with that. Here's another example of uh, maybe furniture as a good example. Guide me through when I pick my main desk, what are the options for side desks or legs or the different top styles, colors, 
you know, you probably get the idea because you may have done exactly that on a site before. It ensures that you get the right options with the right core products. And then that sale can be, you know, managed and automated and passed into NetSuite as a sales order or a quote, depending on what your needs are. Some add-ons and options for CPQ, manufacturing, bomb and routing. So if that purchase uh, necessitates the need in your business and your use of NetSuite to select the right bomb and, and have the team build the right components and assemble those internally, it is um, integrated directly into those features of NetSuite. I mentioned the proposal generator. It can turn back around a proposal that maybe the customer can look at and go share with their family or colleagues, depending on what the product is. And then, as I mentioned, tying it right into your website so that that guided selling can happen both internally with your sales team or directly on your website from a customer perspective. All right, so let us know if you want to learn more about CPQ. We're going to wrap it up with just a couple of quick mentions here. Sweet Analytics, you may know we talked about Sweet Analytics workbooks earlier. Sweet Analytics is really the name for a broad set of reporting and BI tools within NetSuite. So one of the optional uh, solutions that you have in the Sweet Analytics family is Warehouse. If you're familiar with what a data warehouse is or a data lake, and you, maybe you don't have one, this is a great tool because it gives you a data warehouse or data lake right out of the gate with all your NetSuite data built in. And there are even some more advanced visualization and um, BI capabilities in Sweet Analytics Warehouse. But really where the power comes in in this tool is it has the ability to connect to other data sources. So if you've got other internal systems you've built or other systems you use to run your business, it makes it very easy to connect with those pull in all that data, and now you can do advanced visualizations across all those platforms within the Sweet Analytics Warehouse tool set. So very good tool. Ask us about that. It's actually priced very competitively. If you've ever priced any data warehouse tools or data lakes, I think you'll be surprised at how aggressive this is priced. And then Melissa and I are going to wrap it up here with a plug for the next conference you really should attend, and that is Sweet World, which is in October. It's in Las Vegas. If you've been before, it's a great way to learn a lot more about new features of NetSuite, meet other people that may be in like businesses and how they're leveraging NetSuite. And also visit what uh, is the expo. And that's where there are hundreds of companies in the expo that are typically referred to as third-party add-ons like Avalara, R Smart Topalti, many of our partners. And you can learn quite a bit in just a couple of days in one location. Next, we is going to do a remote version again this year. So if you can't make it out to Las Vegas in person, go ahead and sign up for the remote version. It is a scaled down version. There are limited sessions and you, you, know, you can't visit the expo like you could if you intend in person. If you're going to be there, let us know. We'd love to grab a cup of coffee or a meal with you. All in all, it's a great place to learn quite a bit. So we hope we see you at Sweet World. So with that, we're going to wrap up this session. We thank you for attending and hope that you found something in the power tools at the beginning half or in some of the newer features in 2023.1 that you can leverage within your business. So for both uh, Melissa and me, we appreciate your time and we look forward to seeing you in the next session. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, everybody.